Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Faith. I'm an HR professional and event host based in Toronto, Canada. If this is your first time here, please make sure you use the subscribe button. Yes, it's the red cute one below this video. And also click on that notification bell so when I post a new video, you will be the first to know. And if you're a returning viewer, you know I love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for sticking with me. Okay, guys. So, today I have a guest with me. Her name is Bolawa. This is the second time that we're shooting together. If you haven't watched the first video that we shot together, you need to go on. You need to watch, like, you need to watch it now. In fact, pause this one, watch that one, and then come back here. <laughs> I'm going to link it up here. We talked about um, renting houses in Canada, what you need to look out for. She gave a lot of nuggets. There are things that even I, and I've been in this Canada for a while, I don't know some of the things that she mentioned, so please make sure that you watch that video. Um, but today we are talking about something different. But before we go into what we're talking about, I'm going to leave Bolawa to introduce herself again. <laughs> <laughs> so please, Bolawa, take it away. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, Hi, sure. everyone. My name is Bolawa. I am a real estate agent with Ride at Home Realty in Vaughan, Ontario. Um, I work in and around of GTA, Hamilton, Kitchener, Waterloo region, and up to Niagara region as well. Mm -hmm. Did you say um, winning real estate? You didn't mention that. <laughs> Please, oh, yes. she's an award winning. An award winning realtor <laughs> with Ride at Home Realty. Please don't be humble in this life. <laughs> you really too will not help you. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, you did not mention that you are, because our men are looking at you like they say, oh, who is this beautiful lady that is here? Please, <laughs> she's a mother of two. Please tell them. Uh, yes, I am uh -huh. happily married. Happily. Thank God. Yes. And with two beautiful children. I see. I'm happy. Oh, God, please, why you see me? Thank me, because I'm the one happy. <laughs> Otherwise. <laughs> All right. Okay, so anyway, that's just by the way. So, guys, we're going to be talking about um, buying a home in Canada. Mm -hmm. Now, this subject is very, very, this is a hot topic. Because trust me, when you come into Canada, you want to buy a home. And that's what we're going to be talking about here. So if you are a first-time home buyer, please stick around till the end of this video. It might be long, but trust me, it will be a packed video, no matter the length. So please stick around till the end. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Now, in terms of, so I'm, I'm new to Canada, oh fine, I've been here for a while, but now I'm ready to buy a home. What's, what are the steps I need to follow? Okay, there are a few steps. Okay. The first one is to get pre-approved. You need to know how much you may qualify for as a single income person or as a you know dual income in the family or even as a business owner. Mm. You need to speak with a mortgage broker and see how much you may qualify for and then you know work towards what budget you may want to peg your shopping budget at right and this would then lead back to how much deposits you may require or down payment that you need and closing costs that you would need all of this math you know can be worked through with even myself or a mortgage broker but yes the first step is to get pre-approved now, the second step after pre-approval is to find a real estate agent. Okay. Um, you can reach out to me. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go on realtor.ca and find a realtor based on maybe a location that you want. If you're looking for a realtor in Hamilton, you can filter out, you know, look realtors in Hamilton and mm. it would give you a list of realtors. Also, I would recommend interviewing your realtor. Um, I had a client who actually interviewed me because he was considering a few other realtors and you know I was able to explain the kind of service that I provide mm -hmm. how I'm going to actually help him and You know, I'm glad you know to have worked with him right. But I think it's important because it gave him an idea of the kind of realtor what he's looking for mm. in a realtor now When you have a realtor as a as your realtor, I'll ask you for proof of deposit that you have because I want to be sure that you if you are really truly and ready you have to have your pre-approval documents right and your down payments ready mm. so that when there's an offer and we need to cut the deposit the initial deposit then these funds are ready and they are where they need to be right in your checking accounts not in your RRSP RASP or investment accounts okay 
Okay, before we go into the numbers. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, after finding a realtor, now you're pre-approved, you have a realtor, now we would, and you don't have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. We can discuss what cities would really work best for you. If you already have a city in mind that is within your budget, then absolutely great. Right. Otherwise, we can go over, okay, you know, what cities may work best for you. If Once we are able to determine that, then we'll go shopping okay. within your budget range. Once we find a house, of course, we're going to look at multiple properties, mm -hmm. you know, the age of each home, you know, the systems, the furnace, the roof, the things that make the property function, you know, they need to be in good order. And um, once you find a home that you like, we're going to put in an offer. And then this offers, thankfully, we're in a sane market, in right. a more balanced market now that we can have your financing conditions, we can have inspection conditions as well. Once the offer is accepted, we would have an inspector. I have a team of inspectors that I work with. They are licensed, they are good, they would come in and look and inspect the property and give you a PDF report right. of everything, everything, you know. As a buyer, you'd also be present so they can talk you through, you know, the home and the things they've discovered in the home. Mm -hmm. Now, after the inspection is done, um, you know, we'll do all the documents to say, okay, we've inspected. If we want the sellers to repair some things, we would communicate that across and all of that and once the inspection is done um, and we're moving forward with the offer, offer yeah. then we're pretty much waiting for closing at this time. Okay. Of course there are other things that you would have to do, you know, work towards um, closing, mm -hmm. you know, hire a lawyer. I also work with a team of lawyers that would help us in the closing of the transactions. Right. Wow, that, I mean, <laughs> it sounds like a lot. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of steps, but look, I, I guess the point is that's why realtors are here, right? To Absolutely. walk you through that um, journey. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think, so in terms of, because I've heard people who have been scammed by realtors who are not legit. How do I, be, um, since that's part of the first steps, right? Like, how do I know if this person I'm talking to is actually legit? You can ask your realtor for their RICO license. Okay. That's the Real Estate Council of Ontario license. We're all licensed, and this license will have a registration number and the expiry date. So you need to make sure it's valid. You can also take it a step further. Go on realtor.ca, mm -hmm. type in your the realtor's name, it's going to pop up if they are really a realtor, and then you can call their office to also make sure that is this person a real estate agent in in that in, particular, in, that, in yeah. this particular brokerage. Yes. Okay, so guys, please, you've heard it because I've heard people who have gotten scammed. It's a lot of money to buy a house, so trust me, you want to make sure that the person that you're working with is legit. So everything that Bolawa just said. Okay, <laughs> so now can we talk a bit uh, more about securing a mortgage? Because I think that's usually a big deal, of course, when it comes to buying a home. And that's why most people can't afford to mm -hmm. because it's either they don't qualify for mortgages or things like that. So maybe you want to just touch a bit on that. like you know. Right. So I am not a mortgage broker. Of course. <laughs> um, but of course, I, I work in this industry and I can provide some guidance. Yeah. So I would say if you're looking for a home, it might actually be a good idea for your point, first point of contact to be a realtor. Mm. I say this because when I have clients reach out to me, I can direct you to a few mortgage brokers or you can go walk into a bank and speak to a mortgage specialist as well mm. um, now what they would do is to evaluate your income okay and usually it's about your income multiplied by five is what you may qualify for so for example if your family income is about two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars if we multiply that by five you would be qualifying for up to a million dollars now circumstances are different right. and that is why it is best to speak with a mortgage specialist or a mortgage broker directly um, to know how much you actually qualify right. for for some families who 
also receive CCB, this may be factored into how much they qualify for and help them qualify for more. I also have to say that you, if you have car loans, okay, this may reduce, will reduce ah. how much Wahala. you qualify for. Okay. Um, <laughs> hopefully, you know, your income has enough bandwidth mm -hmm. to help you qualify for enough to buy a home. Right. But, um, you know, factors that may reduce how much you qualify for would be your car loan, um, student loan, and credit card um, loans, like balances. Right. Okay. So that makes sense. What is, like, do you have an idea of the interest rates right now? Because I know it's, it's, <laughs> it's a bit crazy and it keeps fluctuating. So, yeah. Yeah. I know that fixed mortgage rates are currently around 4.6%. Okay. And um, variable rates are about 5%, you know, and above. I know fixed rates are actually cheaper than variable rates right now. So you may want to think about that when buying a home and decide which one may be the best for, you know, your family, your circumstances, and your income generally. So can I switch uh, between, so if I buy a home and I'm on a fixed rate, can I switch to the variable? As in, of course, now the one that is going to favor me. Like, <laughs> can I just switch from one type of uh, interest rate to the other? No. Nope. No and yes. Okay. When you're on a variable rate, you can move to a fixed rate. Okay. Usually the mortgage term is three years to five years, depending on what you've, you know, shopped for and what you've um, gotten. Mm. But for variable, for people who are on variable rates, they can move to a fixed rate. People who are on a fixed rate would have to finish their loan term if it's three years or if it's five years, you have to finish. If you're looking to break that mortgage, right. then you have penalties. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I thought, anyway, I figured that I wasn't that straightforward, but right. I thought I should ask. So now when we get to the point where you are about to close a house, so I make an offer. Once I make an offer, well, as the word implies, it's kind of an offer, but what guarantees do I have at that point that the landlord or the person who is selling will sell to will sell to me like is it still a bidding war at that point after mm -hmm. i've made an offer to you know on the house now when an offer is made mm -hmm. the seller's agent usually would send out an email to every realtor that has shown the property to say now we have one offer okay now in the case where they receive another offer now you're in a bidding situation and that is where I come in to help you to manage, you know, the bidding process. Mm. If the seller is happy with, you know, our offer based on the price, the conditions, the closing dates, right. all the factors that they may be looking for, that mm -hmm. of course this will go into the old negotiating process, negotiation process and everything, um, they would accept the offer in right. writing. So basically all the documents that we've sent, the offer documents will be signed back and an acceptance is basically made. Now with, in Ontario, once there's an accepted offer, mm -hmm. you would be paying the initial deposits, okay. which is usually 5% of the offer value. Okay. So within 24 working hours, there will be the deposit that will go to the seller's brokerage the seller's agent's office right so in this case you're not paying you know you're not paying anyone yeah, you're, you're paying, paying to, to the seller's agent's brokerage right and the deposit is held in trust okay towards closing when even the sellers themselves may be receiving mm -hmm. um the the money um another thing i wanted to mention about actually hiring a real estate agent is that Real estate agent services in Ontario are usually paid by the sellers. Oh, I see. So, um, as a buyer, your realtor services comes as a zero cost to you. So, the services of a realtor is at zero cost to you, free of charge. Okay. And then, so what if I start using a particular realtor and then in the course of the whole looking at houses, I want to switch Realtors, how do I do that? Or maybe I'm not just satisfied with their services. How do I go okay. about it? And that's why I mentioned that before you start working with a realtor, you have to interview them, you know, mm. try and make sure that this is the realtor you want to work with. And in the case where, you know, you've signed the exclusive 
um, working relationship mm -hmm. and you would want to switch realtors, you have this conversation with your realtor and you can sign a mutual release document to release you to go and work with someone else. Okay, but try not to just be <laughs> playing a fast one on, yeah. on more than one realtor. Exactly. Um, okay, so yeah, I guess, you know, that's kind of covers, you know, most of it. But mm -hmm. is there anything, so is there any general advice? Is there anything that people should look out for, especially now that the market is the way it is? Like, what would be your general advice to someone who is in Canada and always has been thinking of buying a home? Yes. My general advice would be, Ask questions. Mm. Speak with professionals. Um, you know, sometimes we even we can even afford more than we think. Mm. And if you have some money saved already, I think you should speak with a professional to at least know where your family would qualify for or where you may qualify for. And speak with a realtor. What can I get within this price range? What are the interest rates? What is interest rates? How, you know, how what is mortgage term? Ask questions so that if you're not even ready, even financially, you know what you're working towards mm. at that point. You can say, okay, maybe in five years I can would have saved this much and I can improve my income this way and that way. Right. Um, so that's the first thing. Again, get in. Get in the market. No pressure, but if you can afford it, get in um, and just start your portfolio that way. Please, you said no pressure. Me, I'm under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so, no pressure, but get in. Okay, you want to get in. <laughs> no pressure, but if you, if you, that's why I said, if you mm -hmm. can afford to, right. then, because there's also time value, right? Mm -hmm. Over time, in 10 years, it certainly will not be the same price. So if you can get in today, get in and, you know, start building your portfolio that way. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think, you know, we've covered quite a lot. But just a random question in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, if I wanted to buy a townhouse now, <laughs> a townhouse in the GTA, like three beds <laughs> and two baths. Like, right. like, what should I be looking at? Because I think it's better we give you guys an idea of you know, the yeah. amount, the mm -hmm. cost, so that you can start planning, so that you mm -hmm. know, if it's only 10K you have in your pocket, so that you know that your 10K cannot buy anything. <laughs> so maybe if we have, if you have those numbers, and I know you don't necessarily have to have them, but mm -hmm. just if, if you can give an idea of what the price points are right. now. Okay. So I would say in the GTA, the average price of a townhouse would be about 700000 and above. Ooh. Yes. Now, there are not to bore you, <laughs> but there are different types of townhouses. There are freehold townhouses and there are condo townhouses. Right. Condo townhouses are generally, depending on the location, sometimes are cheaper okay. because you still have the responsibility of condo fees. Mm. And some of these condos, you know, again, you're not throwing money away. It's like having a purse mm. where they take the condo, all of the units in the condominium corporation would put in a certain amount right. every month and then they use it to either you know repair the roof pay for water um garbage disposal mm -hmm. snow, snow removal yeah. repairing the some of the yeah. condo corporations even take care of the windows and okay. the doors the roof the backyard of you know the condos. the condos yeah so usually condo townhouses are like relatively cheaper than the freehold one mm. for the freeholds you know you are responsible for you don't pay anything monthly you're responsible for all the maintenance of your own um, yeah, property, own property. Yeah. Oh, wow that's so you see guys if you want to start getting your money ready please start saving <laughs> i don't i don't even know where people will start anyway god will help all of us <laughs> um, but yeah i think you know we've kind of covered quite a bit and of course if you have any further questions please make sure you reach out to bolawa um do you want to go over you know your handles again or how they can contact you okay before i go over my yes. handles because you were mentioning you know getting money together mm -hmm. i want to give like a rough idea of how much you should actually be working towards yes, please in terms of a deposit now we've mentioned that 
you know, a condo townhouse may be around $750,000, right? Hmm. And then you'll be wondering, how much do I really need? Mm. Okay, that's a good one. In terms of point. a down payment yes. for a $750,000 home. For first-time home buyers, it's usually called 5% deposits or down payments. Right. But the way it's actually calculated is 5% of of the first 500,000 okay and then 10 percent of the rest so we'll oh. use 750,000 as our example and we'll split it into two mm -hmm. so with 750,000 we have 500,000 and, and then 250,000 yeah. yes so five percent of the 500 which is 25,000 mm -hmm. and then 10 percent of 250 50. which is another 25,000 right so that's that makes it 50,000 50. Ah. Yes, so that's how much you need. And then there's also closing cost, okay. which is usually around 1% to 2% of the property value. Ah, you still pay, after you pay for you still pay for closing. Yes, well, you should not <laughs> annoy me. <laughs> you should not annoy me because... <laughs> ah, but that's why you need to speak with a mortgage okay. broker mm -hmm. because you may even have a mortgage um, product okay. that would offer you the closing costs I see that would have their co closing costs included in the the um, in the mortgage product so you don't have to have the closing costs okay again conversations conversations speak with professionals mm. and if you reach out to me I have a few mortgage brokers that I work with even personally for my investments that I can refer to you and can help you look at the numbers you know credits as well okay credit score look at your credit score look at your income look at how much you have saved and how much you may you know qualify for perfect perfect so yeah you're going to talk about um how they can contact you right before yes we, yeah. yes so um you can find me at roto bolawa on instagram and on facebook my number is 416-917 four zero three six and my email address is rotobolawa at gmail.com so everything is rotobolawa at gmail.com rotobolawa on instagram rotobolawa on facebook. facebook as well perfect so guys and everything she just said we are also going to put in the description box so don't worry you don't have to pause the video and write down i'm going to put her contact details there um thank you bolawa honestly you. you have provided us with a lot of value um guys if you are still watching this video at this point which i believe you are please make sure you don't go without hitting the like button please hit that button for bolawa my guest mm -hmm. and also share this video because you know buying a house in canada is one of the like i said very hot topics and i think that it is something that you should um, be aware of and a lot of people are going to be looking for this information so make sure that you share this with don't be stingy <laughs> we rise by lifting others up even if you, you don't have the down payment now somebody else has it mm -hmm. so please share <laughs> okay so that they can watch the video and know what the, um, buying a home entails so yeah, Balawa, do you want to say goodbye to the guests before I round it off? Before I say goodbye, sorry, I, uh -huh. I, I just keep coming into yeah, my head please. and I think I should This share. is an ideation um, <laughs> set, so please go ahead. So please <laughs> note that um, as a first time home buyer, you can e either buy a retail home, that these are properties that are already built, so, mm -hmm. you know, you walk in and, you know, we'll go and see the properties or you can consider pre-construction. Um, basically, you're buying a property off the plan. There will be a deposit structure from the builder and usually a future closing date. It can be six months or a year before you close. So when you're buying a pre-construction, what your responsibility at the time, your responsibility at the time is the deposits. Of course, make sure for every pre-construction you're purchasing that you do qualify mm. for when you want to close. Right. You have to qualify. You have to have to qualify. Please do not buy any pre-construction that you do not qualify to close on, mm. unless you know you really, you really want to assign it before closing, and that way you you know you can assign it, and you don't have to close on it. And right. you have to make sure that the builders are allowing people to assign such contracts. Okay. So um, with pre-cons, you have. A future closing date so sometimes it allows people to have more money to 
allows them time to save up right. towards closing. Right. So I just thought to mention, because I think we mostly covered like um, yeah. resale homes. Yes. So pre-construction is also another way into I, buying. I actually had that question, but I <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Something removed the question from my head. I don't know. So thank you for bringing that back in. Um, thank course. you. Of okay. Course. So I guess that's goodbye from you, right? Thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, if you'd like to join my mailing list where I share real estate um, nuggets, I won't, I won't spam you. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually once or twice a month. Um, Faith is going to link it below. Yes. Um, you can, it's just a simple form where you can sign up to join my mailing list where I share more real estate um, content and ideas and information about the market. And I also share some pre-construction projects that um, are available on the market. Perfect. So thank mm. you, Bolawa. Thank you. Um, thank guys, you this me. is where we are going to end the video. Remember, like, subscribe, share, mm -hmm. and um, I will see you. Well, I don't know about Bolawa, but I will definitely <laughs> see you on my next video. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye.